And here is that dwarf lavender retic. Oh my gosh. And then there's this girl here who is just a normal reticulated python. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. Yeah, it's a little bit rainy and dreary. That seems to be what spring has been here in Michigan this year, which is crazy because normally we have sunny and beautiful weather, but regardless, I'm, of course, standing in front of Lucy's cage. We did the big update yesterday. If you didn't watch it, go ahead and check that video out. My vet is coming here later today. We're going to talk about not only just whatever is going on here at the Reptarium. It doesn't seem to be any major issues that we have to worry about, but we're definitely going to start to talk about Lucy, what our strategy is. So after she leaves, I will update you guys on what she says what she thinks we should do. Uh, we'll see what's going on here. As for now, I'm just going to take a look around the Reptarium, head back over to BHB, see if there's any colubrid clutches and what else is going on over there. And weirdly enough, here at BHB, we only have a couple colubrid clutches. Tell you what, I'm going to be sad when we have days that we don't have a ton of eggs, but regardless, this is actually a head scaleless corn, and it's actually bred to just a scaleless corn. It's actually really pretty, too. I mean, look at the black borders on the saddle. I mean, this is actually bordering on an oak tea, to be totally honest with you. Absolutely stunning and again that's just bred to a normal scaleless animal so theoretically half the clutch should be scaleless half the clutch should be head for scaleless regardless looks like some pretty good eggs we got a couple little sluggers in there but nothing too major the majority of the clutch is definitely really good you can see this egg right here is definitely no good right there it just dropped off and that's fine right now we have two four six eight ten twelve good eggs and two little sluggers right here not a bad way to start the day again not a bunch of clutches today but hey 12 eggs isn't a bad thing at all I'm always super excited to put colubrid eggs down too. And you can see this egg up here is just a little bit dimpled. And if I left it like that, it actually could desiccate a little bit more because the humidity in this box is pretty high, but it's not high enough to really get that egg to pop out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit of this damp sphagnum that's right here, the dampest part of it right here, and you can squeeze it. There's definitely enough water in it, but it's not dripping wet because I don't want the eggs to get wet. And I'm just gonna put that right over there and that egg will actually absorb that moisture from the sphagnum moss, pop back out, and it's should be completely fine. Let's go ahead and pull the other clutch. This next clutch and last clutch of the day is actually a het snow scaleless corn snake. So it's gonna look normal, but it's also het for albino and anurethristic, which makes snow. And then of course, scaleless. And all a nice, beautiful clutch of eggs here. Doesn't look like a ton of eggs, but they're absolutely gorgeous. Doesn't look like any infertile. Oh, nope, there's one little infertile little slugger right there. Wouldn't you know that would have to happen? But she looks really good. Again, the females are doing really well this year. They look nice and plump and ready for second clutches. Haven't been having much retained eggs. Only that one girl from yesterday, which was a scaleless Texas rat that seems to be doing about the same as she was yesterday. Go ahead, get this girl all process up. Make sure she's in good shape. Get her some water. And I want to show you the male that she actually bred to, which is really cool. This, of course, is the scaleless male. You can see a little bit of faint patterning in him, but other than that, he's pretty much just a white snake with no scales. Absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And again, because the females have for snow and scaleless, and the fact that the male is actually a snow scaleless. About half of this clutch right here is going to be scaleless and the other half isn't, but you could get albino scaleless that are het for snow. You can get anurethristic, which are the black corns that are het for snow, and you can of course get scaleless of all kinds of different stuff. Regardless, we've got two, four, six, eight, nine good eggs and one slug. So, hey guys, that's it for today. No more egg collecting. Let's see what else we can get into. And just so you guys kind of follow along, these are the eggs that we've now put on the shelf with our clubrid eggs all up here. So, uh, we're filling up pretty good. I'm probably going to have to move these all the way down here because my thought is, is we'll probably fill this entire aisle up when we're done maybe even a little bit more so absolutely incredible because last year I don't even think we got halfway down so we're definitely having a much better year this year so it's pretty exciting for sure and hey in only later five or six weeks before our first colubrid clutches are starting to hatch and then we're gonna be hatching for a good two months solid every day we'll have a bunch of really awesome baby snakes the one really exciting thing that is happening today is my friend that actually gave me sunfire and butterscotch and a few other snakes including Titan believe or not, had a few more reticulated pythons that he was hanging on to, and he's kind of in a position where he said like, hey Brian, is there any way that you can take these last couple animals? We're gonna go and have him pick up a few more reticulated pythons today, which are pretty exciting, and then 
we're gonna actually pick up some cages for Bruce and Jessica that he had laying around that they really like. Uh, Sunfire here is turning out to be a beautiful snake. I mean, just look at how gorgeous she is, I tell you what. And I think that there's a couple lavender albinos. I think one of them is a dwarf. And then there's a normal retic, which I'm pretty excited about because I love normal retics and I don't have one. So uh, Sunfire, you're about to get some company, girl. I'll just let her kind of crawl around for a little bit. She's an amazing animal. So here a little bit later, we're gonna go on about a two hour drive to get a couple new giant big snakes. Since there's not a whole ton of like collecting eggs and a lot of busy work to do today, I did want to show you a few animals that I'm hoping produce really good clutches that are coming up, starting with these man Mandarin rat snakes. I mean, take a look at this male right here. He is absolutely stunning. Stunning! What a beautiful snake. And then this is the female, and she's starting to swell up pretty good. I have a pretty good feeling that we're gonna get a clutch of eggs from her this year. But look at the difference between the two for sure. This male is just so clean and absolutely gorgeous. And of course, the female is also beautiful. It's not as queen, clean and bright. But nevertheless, I sure hope we get some mandarin rat snakes because we've been producing them for a number of years, and they are definitely gorgeous. I just had about a half hour conference with my vet. She came over, just kind of looked around at everything else, and then we talked quite a bit about Lucy. And her suggestion was, Let's leave her alone for about a week, wait till she says, see if she does pass anything. Then in about a week, if she doesn't, there's something that's called oxytocin. It's actually a medication that originally was for birds that were dystocia or egg bound. It kind of puts them into a contraction mode. And I've actually used it on a snake probably 15 years ago with success. So she wants to go ahead and give Lucy a shot of oxytocin. If she doesn't start passing eggs in the next week or 10 days, then if the oxytocin doesn't work, then we have to start looking at the more difficult thing, which is of course surgery. She said she's never operated on a snake this size, so she'd want to bring a couple other surgeons in, which is completely fine, but she said she had the connections to do that, so I'll keep you guys up to date. As for now, we're going to let Lucy just kind of stay alone for the next week. We're going to see if she starts to pass eggs. If she doesn't, we'll go ahead, hit her up with oxytocin shot, which you have to shoot right into the heart, which will be really fun, as you can imagine. And then if for whatever reason oxytocin doesn't work, then we're going to have to look at surgery. Regardless, we're on the path. I think we're going to be okay. I think it's going to all work out. She feels confident that we'll be able to save Lucy for sure, so that's all that matters to me. No matter what we have to do, we gotta save Lucy. Well, we may not have a lot of snake eggs today, but at least Jessica came to the rescue with some gargoyle eggs. Oh, wow, look at this one. Which, who's this? This is Morticia. Oh, she is beautiful. And she's the mama? Yep. Oh my gosh, she looks chunky still. <laughs> Where are you going, little monkey? She's just a big girl. Like, <laughs> she's actually one of our larger females. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So, all right, let's see what we got. Hopefully some good eggs. Okay. Now this girl's kind of weird. She always lays one good egg and one infertile egg. Really? Yeah. So we'll see this time. They look pretty good, no? No, one, look, this is uh, the first one she laid. One is obviously growing. One's still good, but it's not growing. Right. So Can't we'll just see. To see. This one might be infertile. And oh, yeah, I there's the infertile there. one. That's crazy, huh? Yeah. Every time, that's insane. It's so weird, like last year was the same way. So maybe wow. she just has one yeah. ovary, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, maybe one of the ovaries. Well, regardless, we got at least one good egg from a gargoyle. And on a day that we don't have a lot of eggs, I'm happy for every egg I get. This is another pairing that I am so excited about. Of course, these are 100 flower rat snakes. This is a male Molendorfi right here. And then this female right here that's going into shed, but it doesn't look like a pre-lay shed is actually a hypomelanistic. So I hope that this shed that she's going into right now is a follicle shed and that she'll start to breed and maybe with any luck we'll get some eggs now last year they did lay a clutch of eggs but unfortunately they were infertile and none hatched so hopefully this year will be the charm andrew is just going through and doing all of her maintenance this is all what for all the lizards yep all the greens and fruit all right cool and then you're going to feed dart frogs right i'm going to yes. you guys know that i like to feed dart frogs but i'm going to let andrea do it this time all right Woo. don't take care of my frogs all right I will. <laughs> there is nothing that makes me happier than feeding those frogs. I don't know what it is. They're just so darn cute. I love them to death. And uh, it's something I haven't shown in the last few weeks. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And hoo doggy, look at this albino garter snake here. How loaded she is with babies. These guys are live bears. And we have a bunch of really cool garter snakes that are just full of babies. So here in another probably two to three weeks, we'll open up the cage one day. And bam, there's just going to be a ton of little baby albino garter snakes. A girl this size probably will have somewhere between 20 and 25 babies. Oh, I can't wait to see those.
Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. All right, so I'm gonna go take off and get these snakes, okay? Okay, bring back a dog or two. No. <laughs> what? <laughs> a dog or two? No, not bring dog. Uh, so you're okay with me getting these? Okay? Love how you exactly worded that. You're okay with me getting these, okay? <laughs> what are you doing? We're, we're actually getting uh, a few bigger retic. Retic? Retic. What's a retic? Reticulated pythons. <laughs> I heard of retic. What's a retic? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, are they cool? Like, what kind of color are they? I think there's a, a maybe an albino, a albino. normal. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but same person that gave us butterscotch, Titan, and Sunfire. So, uh, yeah, I think they're like 10 footers or something like that. Oh, oh, that's, nice. that's Is it going to be as nice as Titan? Oh Jesus! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Regardless, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm on my way. It's about a two-hour drive or something like that. So by the time we get back, you guys won't get a chance to meet them. So tomorrow Aww. you can meet them. How okay. sad. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just joking. That's cool, man. Uh, in safe travels. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> and you may be asking, why do I need more retics? Uh, certainly, Lori asked that question when I talked to her about this too. But the fact is, is that I'm looking for that kind of next size retic. You know, we have Casper, we have Perdita, we have Snaz, we even have Sunrise, but we don't have that like next big size animal. I mean, we certainly have Butterscotch coming up, but she's still a pretty tough animal to hold. So I'm hoping that some of these, the albino or the normal, whatever the case is, is a really good animal that's a little bit bigger and eventually will get much bigger because we all know too that Daisy isn't the greatest handling snake either. She's super docile, super great animal, but she does buck a lot. She doesn't really like to be touched that much. So I'm hoping that maybe a couple of these snakes will be great animal ambassadors once we actually get them. But again, until I see them and see the size and see how they act, I really don't know. So in a way, I'm going here kind of blind, hoping for the best. And we made it to our destination, so let's go ahead, go inside, check out these retics and see what he has going on here. Wow, it turned from a gloomy, rainy day to a beautiful day out here. And the first snake here is, oh my gosh, this thing is gorgeous. How old is this? Three. She's three years old, oh my God, she is stunning. Wow, Bruce, what is, is that thing incredible? It's kind of hard to believe it's that, that little, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is stunning. And here is that dwarf lavender retic. Oh my gosh. Her name is actually Sunny D. So we'll just continue to call her Sunny D because I think the name is absolutely beautiful. But this again is a dwarf. So this is a three year old reticulated python. You can see it's really not that big. I tell you what, that is spectacular. And then there's this girl here who is just a normal reticulated python, which I think is great because it's really good to have a normal phase represented at the zoo. These guys will go into quarantine for just a little while, make sure that they're okay, but they look absolutely healthy. My buddy Chad had these animals since they were babies, so they certainly are really good and haven't been around anything else. But this is another beauty, and again, I think it'll be a great addition to the Reptarium because we'll be able to actually show this is what a normal retic looks like. Then we're showing Casper and Perdita and Night Fury. We'll be able to show what they would look like in the wild. And then lastly, there's this girl here who's a lavender albino reticulated python. Again, this is basically just like Daisy was, to be honest with you. A little bit more lavender and all honesty but again I wanted to have a snake like Daisy that was handled right from when they were younger so that they're really incredibly habituated to handling unfortunately as tame as Daisy is she wasn't handled a ton when she was younger so like I had mentioned she's kind of twitchy and a little bit weird so as this girl gets older and gets handled ton he is gonna be a great animal ambassador for the reptarium I couldn't be more excited about getting these animals getting them kind of habituated getting them into the reptarium now what we're gonna do also Chad is actually giving us these cages here and uh, I think that's some of the crew will like these are animal plastic super nice cages for sure uh he doesn't need them anymore so why not take them so we just have to load these guys up load the animals up and then drive a couple hours home All right, so we are all loaded up and ready to go. Dude, thank you so much, man, seriously. Uh, come visit anytime. All right, let's go ahead and get these guys home, get them all set up. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm definitely pretty excited about it. Okay, back at the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys set up down here. I cannot wait till they kind of go through our quarantine process and eventually get over to the Reptarium because they are absolutely gorgeous. I hope that you enjoyed the adventure to go pick them up. And with that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog. Wish you guys an amazing day. Tell you how much I love you. Be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.